Okay, now some worldwide stats. Um, here we go. So again, Apple, in terms of the operating system, is still pretty far ahead. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Nokia's operating system, Symbian, starting to uh, show some declines as well, and there's Android. And um, Symbian had 25% of ad requests, by the way, compared to Apple. What's probably going to happen is that um, the developers who develop applications will be the big winners because of the fact that what's making operating systems stand apart are essentially the applications. And so uh, it's quite likely that uh, OEMs and, and uh, OS companies, makers like Apple, would create incentives for people to develop on their platform, uh, particularly as it gets easier for developers to get their products out on Android and other open uh, operating systems. Okay, and this is just a breakdown of just smartphone requests by the operating system um, <laughs> worldwide. And the item in blue is uh, the iPhone, again, 50%. So Apple is really making a massive splash. I mean, it's pretty amazing when you think about it because the iPhone is actually not that old. Now, the other major battle in terms of phones is just telephony in, in general. And a um, perfect example would be Google Voice which is a smart forwarding application, and I'll, I'll try to show it to you later if we have some more time. But the way it works is that you get a central number and you can have it uh, automatically redirect to your, your handset, whatever you use, or your office phone. And you can essentially use your central number as your sort of point number for everything. It doesn't matter with Rogers or with Fido. It's actually not in Canada yet, except for those who grandfathered to Grand Central, the original company. Um, but the implications for Telcos is significant because what it means is that you won't have to actually rely on, on a telco for your specific phone number. You can just switch whatever you want, it makes no difference. You can take your, your main number and port it over to Google. And so Apple um, created a lot of controversy last year because they basically barred the Google Voice application from the App Store, which triggered an FCC investigation. Um, so Google is now creating a web based version of it. Uh, for those of you who have jailbroken iPhones, there's a version called GV Mobile, which is essentially what Google was developing, and Apple had that removed as well. It's a really great application. And the nice thing about Google Voice is that it also has free uh, SMS, so you can send text to anyone in uh, North America for free, and it also converts your voicemail to uh, email, so you can actually get it in your inbox, and it's also a visual voicemail as well, and it's all free. So Google is also making more moves. They acquired Gizmo 5 for $25 million from Michael Robinson, who you may know from mp3.com. And so essentially now they have a smartphone, which means that in the future, in the near future, with Google Voice, you won't even uh, have to have a separate phone. I mean, one of the things that Google says to telcos is that we're not taking away business because you still have to have a phone to actually use Google Voice. But with a soft phone, which Gizmo 5 offers, essentially now they'll be able to offer voice over IP, much like Skype. And speaking of which, then there's Skype, which is available on the iPhone, just arrived in Canada uh, nearly a year after the rest of the world. It's been on Windows Mobile for a super long time, and also uh, on the Blackberry. Um, on the iPhone, it only runs on Wi-Fi. Uh, it doesn't run over 3G unless your phone's jailbroken. And again, it's all part of this dance with the telcos to not cut into their business, essentially. Uh, because at the bottom, at the end of the day, none of the telcos want to become dumb pipe, which is really kind of where we're moving towards. All we really essentially need is just the data services and the actual device, but they make a killing in terms of margins from things like SMS text, which basically cost them next to zero, and the margin is like well over 100%, more like a thousand percent. So that's what's happening in the world of, uh, of mobile in terms of battle. Now social media, again, it's all a fight about eyeballs getting your attention. Um, speaking of which, I went all the way down to Facebook to just get this presentation ready. And, um, but Facebook is obviously the big player, you know, winner in this space right now. Uh, as you see from this chart, uh, last year, at the end of the year, they announced that they have 350 million members, which is pretty amazing. And they're generating a staggering 500,000 new members a day. So it's really just like a matter of maybe a month before they announced they have 400,000 uh, members, 400 million members. It's also the largest photo sharing site in the world and the third largest video sharing site, which is pretty amazing because they don't have any content. They make it very clear that they are basically a social utility, unlike companies like MySpace, who are very much media companies. There is no Facebook video section. There's no Facebook photo gallery. 
It's all about providing this utility, much like the white pages for people and their online identity. And um, one other thing to know about Facebook is that they're cash flow positive as of last year. Um, they haven't sent out their, their uh, earnings yet in terms of uh, 2009, but they're projected to make 550 million. And the site's only, only uh, five years old and raised over $600 million and have a valuation of 10 billion based on a recent investment of 200 million. So Facebook is well on its way, um, thanks to this man, this smug little shit. So, um, <laughs> it's funny, that's why British man has aim. Um, so yeah, Mark Zuckerberg, he's the 26 year old CEO, co-founder of Facebook. And it's funny because, um, you know, he uh, is sort of socially awkward, which is ironic that he's a social networking guy, um, but he's obviously becoming probably the next big thing since Bill Gates. And so there's now in development the Facebook movie called The Social Network, which is being produced. And uh, it's written by Aaron Sorkin from West Wing. That's his Facebook profile there. And it's funny because um, Justin Timberlake is actually in it. And uh, he plays the founder of Napster. And there's an actor named uh, Jesse Eisenberg who plays Mark Zuckerberg. So I have a copy of the script if anyone's interested. It's actually pretty good. And so if you're interested, just send me a note through, uh, through Twitter. Okay, so back to social media, Facebook versus Twitter. Now, Twitter, even though its traffic is tiny compared to Facebook, it is definitely the biggest threat to Facebook because Twitter does something that Facebook doesn't do very well, which is real-time search, which is why Facebook is modifying their news feeds on a, on a monthly basis, it seems like. Now, according to Pingdom's research lab, Twitter now generates 27 million tweets a day, and that's just in the U.S., according to uh, Comscore. Comscore also shows that half of Twitter users are outside of the U.S. And on average, it's 1.1 million tweets per hour. Um, yeah, it's really amazing what's happening with Twitter. They, they are you know, taking the world arm, essentially. Uh, there's a research firm called Sysmos who uh, looked at tweets and concluded that the top 10% of Twitter users produce 86% of the tweets. Harvard did a similar study and showed that the top 10 of Twitter's, Twitter users do 90% of the tweeting. It's very concentrated. It's very much like um, a one-to-many publishing platform, despite the fact that it's interactive. And um, there's another study that showed that the top 5% of people on Twitter account for 75% of the tweets. And Twitter, by the way, uh, they're actually making money, um, not as much as people might have expected, but they actually turned out a small profit last year. They had revenues of about 25 million, uh, and they made that money by licensing their real-time data to both uh, Google and Microsoft. And um, again, I'm not sure if that model will last. Anyone who's followed Microsoft over the years will remember that they have this, this famous quote that describes how they, their partnerships, which is that they embrace, extend, and engulf. So I guarantee that Microsoft will have their own version of Twitter at some point. Um, in fact, I think Twitter will actually be acquired by Google uh, this year. Their founders have, been, uh, have sold to Google before. So just some numbers there on, on uh, Twitter. As you can see, um, tweets per hour, pretty significant, and it's showing some upward growth as well. Now, the real numbers that I always look at are really unique visitors. I think that that's really the best indication of what kind of market traction the site's doing. And if you look at this graph, the, um, the item there in uh, sort of yellow, that's Facebook. So at the end of August 2009, Facebook was getting 92 million uniques a month. And then there's MySpace, more like 60 million, but as you can see, the trend is downward. And Facebook is way down at like 20.8 million, that's in, uh, in August. But bear in mind, as you know, that a lot of Twitter users are not actually using Twitter.com, they're using TweetDeck, Twitterific, you know, Tweety, that sort of stuff. So the real number could actually be significantly higher. 